I'll throw in here, uh, one of our posters seems to be very anti CJ Stroud, and uh, he's working with some revisionist history here. Dwayne Haskins didn't play as a starter as a freshman at Ohio State. He'd been there a couple of years. Braxton Miller had some terrible games uh, his freshman year as a starter. Uh, so that's revisionist history. He says, did those guys ever play a game like Stroud has? And I don't think Stroud's really played that bad of a game. And uh, he had another one in there as well, uh, JT Barrett. I mean, the Virginia Tech game was about as – bad as it could possibly be kind of a, along the lines of the Oregon game. So um, a little bit of revisionist history. Those guys didn't start on third base and neither has CJ Stroud. So, um, you know, to say he's not living up to anything after three starts and has improved anything. I, I, I don't agree with that. I think, uh, you know, I think could he have done better against Oregon? You know? Yeah. But I mean, you throw 54 passes you know, there's going to be some mistakes in there somewhere. And I think, you know, they didn't lose that game because of C.J. Stroud, I don't think. So, um, you know, I think it's been pretty well documented why they lost that game. Let's not forget Braxton Miller. Ohio State won a game where Braxton Miller started, completed one pass. I knew and where you were going. Won. And he ran for 34 yards in that game as well. So it's not like, he, yeah, sure, he only completed one pass, but he rushed for 240 yards. No. That it game. Was, it was ugly and Terrell Pryor had ugly games Braxton Miller had ugly games uh, JT Barrett Dwayne Haskins got benched coming off the bench one one game <laughs> and had to have JT Barrett come back in for him the, the you can go ahead and criticize CJ Stroud for throwing some errant footballs but his start to his career is as good as it's not quite J, uh, Justin Fields and Dwayne Haskins but those are the two best quarterbacks in Ohio State football history C.J. Stroud is on pace to be number three. Yeah, I, I think it's just the consistency of him coming out with his slow starts. Mm -hmm. I think it's that we see in the start of his games, he's high on all of his throws or a good number of them. I think, you know, if it were, okay, he had a bad first quarter in this game. Okay, he had a bad third quarter in this game. Okay, he airmailed a couple in the first, in in this one okay uh, this one he came up a little bit short but i think it's that consistency and people are using that small sample size of three games because obviously he didn't play in the fourth one and saying well we've seen enough this is what he is this is who he's going to be we're on to the next one even though Kyle McCord had a dismal first series against Akron and um I've also seen out there on the social media front, people saying to heck with both of them. I'm team Jack Miller. Well, Jack Miller attempted what six passes or something like that. I mean, it, it was, but it was, it was such a small sample size there. Well, he showed a poise that, well, he didn't, I mean, he was in for the second half of the third and the fourth and they were content to run the ball. And I like Jack Miller, and I like Jack Miller as a high school quarterback. So, I mean, this isn't me picking and picking winners and picking losers here. I just think that everybody has their opinions here. And let's let's not forget, and I already kind of said something. I'll clean it up. I said it in the private chat in a much more crass way. Ohio State fans love crapping on Ohio State quarterbacks, and this year is no different. And it just seems that playing the role of JT Barrett this year is C.J. Stroud. Uh, Tony brought up that Illinois game. That's one that they continue to show at the uh, symposium for first-year head coaches. Uh, 2011, Ohio State, Illinois, you know, uh, those guys get their orientation that the NCAA brings them in as first-year head coaches and shows them the end of the game, four minutes to go, you're down 10. It's fourth down at the five-yard line. You're down 10. What should you do? What did Ron Zook do here? Well, he kicked the field goal, and they paused the thing. No, he didn't. He went for it on fourth down, got stuffed, and didn't get it, and the game was over. You kick the field goal there 100 times out of 100 and then kick off to keep hope alive. Get it down to seven so the next time you get the touchdown and you tie the game. But that one they still show. They replay it. They bring everybody into Indianapolis every year in July you know, the guys who are first-year head coaches and say, here's your card. This is what you do when it's 
you know, go for two. And then here's some end of game situations that you're going to need to learn how to manage. And here's one of them right here. So there you go. I think they just have a card of what Zook has done and say, do the opposite. I think do it's the exact a, opposite. The long card do of the exact everything. Exact opposite. That, like recruit kind of like Ron Zook. Don't do anything on the field like Ron Don't Zook. Don't coach or develop players like <laughs> But you can water ski like Ron Zook. If you want to, yes, water ski like Ron Zook if you can. That's a, a benefit of uh, health. It's fun. But when it gets to game planning and calling plays, don't do what Ronnie Zook do. Are we not giving Jim McElwain credit for his water skiing? Is that what we're doing? Are we attributing that to Ron Zook instead? Is that what we're doing I've here? I've seen, seen him lay on boats with sharks. I don't know. I don't call that water skiing. Okay. Okay. It's Zook that's the water skier. Okay. Tony had me scrambling to that 17-7 game against Illinois because, yeah, I'm thinking, I remember Jake Stoneburner had a touchdown, so that was Braxton Miller's one completion. Yeah, what what the QBR formula does with one for four for 17 yards, and it's a touchdown. No picks, one for four, 25. I, I don't know what uh, it does with that. I was going to uh, say, just look at Army West Point any given week because yes. that's probably about their <laughs> passing line. That's their line, yes. That's crazy. So you wonder if C.J. Stroud had done exactly what he's done this season, but this defense was giving up you know, a couple touchdowns a game. They're winning these games. You know, they let's say they beat Oregon 28-17 instead of losing 35-28, et cetera, et cetera. If if the evaluation on CJ Stroud would be somewhat, if not completely different by most of the fan base, if the defense was was playing uh, Ohio State football. You know, I'm I'm going back and looking at Braxton Miller's starts. Half of his starts he in, in his freshman year, he completed under 50% of his passes. And I think uh, in, in two starts he completed, or one start he completed exactly 50% of his passes. So there's a long history of quarterbacks at Ohio State, random games where they complete like 45% of their passes. This last game for C.J. Stroud against Tulsa, he completed 60% of his passes. Like he is completing a higher percentage of passes than Cardale Jones did in his three games to win a national title. So like just, let's just keep in mind that it's – He's not as terrible as some people think. And also, let's also keep in mind, not everybody thinks he's terrible. You've got, I think, a vocal minority who keep hammering the kid. And there was a quarterback once for Ohio State who completed 7 of 21 against a team that was considered maybe the greatest in the history of the game, and it turned out. What do we think about C.J. Stroud as a runner? Uh, I I would think that he would be more involved in in the running game. We'd like to see it. I just think until he's healthy, you're not going to. So um, this will be an important game for that. Uh, we'll we'll see if he's up up to it and ready to do it. Wants to do it, can do it, asked to do it. Will it be called? We don't know. I, again, another one of the great unknowns going into. As they return to Big Ten play, I mean, you're, you're trying to win conference games now and you don't have the full array of all of your weapons available to you on offense. That quarterback run means so much. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be for 100 yards every game, but for the right 40 or 50 yards that convert third and six, it means the world. So, you know, to me, uh, that's what's been missing the first uh, three or four games. So, Steve, uh, David Whalen's looking for the dinner plans. Uh, give us the typical uh, rundown agenda of the road schedule, this time in Piscataway. Yeah, we used to take the train and go into New York City, but that's just a lot of trains, planes, and automobiles at this point in my life. It, uh, you know, It's nice to go to New York City and visit, I suppose, but uh, it is about a 45-minute train ride from the New Brunswick station into um, I think it's uh, Penn Plaza, Penn Station where Madison Square Garden is. You can come in from New Jersey and end up there. And uh, the thing that sucks about that is when you want to go to leave, you've got to be on the last train to Jersey by like midnight or 1130 or something kind of puts a 
crimp and the late night partying if you're into that i suppose so as we were leaving uh, the korean karaoke place that one year yes we had some friends that had booked a korean karaoke thing and we went along just for the free uh alcohol that was a itinerant with that so that worked out uh worked out pretty good so anymore we stay out almost where rutgers is in piscataway new brunswick somerset find a place out there i know these guys are doing a a uh, segment for their uh, Buckeye Scoop Eats thing. Uh, set that up, guys. Where, where are you guys going to be? I haven't made any dinner plans yet. Go ahead. Yeah, Dan. we're going to go get fat sandwiches at a place called Are You Hungry? And it's been on all of the food shows. And they basically take cheese steaks and uh, chicken tenders and French fries and mozzarella, mozzarella sticks, sticks and and lots of cats up for Tony, not even ketchup, but cats up. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a heart attack and a gut bomb and, and a bunch of other things all on a roll. And, uh, I'll enjoy watching Tony try to take one of those down as I order a small salad and a diet Coke. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Normally when I'm in the New York area, I like to hit my, uh, you, you got to hit like the best pizza places and, you know, uh, Kevin wants to go to Sbarro, so we'll check that out there in in New York City and see how that goes. I mean, if it's good enough for the airport and the mall, it's good enough for us. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Sbarro's. Gets the job done. No doubt. 